Hey, this is Kev from Blender Binge. In today's video, we're going to go over the basics of rigging. Now, rigging is something that people can dedicate their entire careers to. I could do like 50 videos on, on rigging, but hopefully after this video, you'll understand what it is, when you'd use it, and why you would use it. And, of course, you know, how to go in and use it yourself. Okay? Let's go. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is if I'm going to talk about rigging, I have to have something to rig. So I'm going to go to create, and I'm going to create a, a cube, and I'll say radius 0.5 because it's just so big and I don't, it's too big. And I'm going to drag this guy up. All right, so he kind of sits on, sits on the grid. Doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, just have him sit on the grid. And then I'm going to hit control C, copy, paste, drag this guy up, hit control V again, drag him up. Okay. And the very basics of rigging is using one thing to control something else. And the very, very basic form of rigging is called parenting. Like you have a child following the parent all the time. That's sort of the relationship that we're talking about here. To do that, we're going to say, all right, so if I have this object right here and I rotate this object, okay, it rotates independently, right? They all rotate independently. They all do their own thing. But if I want these guys to follow this guy, I can do this. Select the child first, okay? It's like being in a, in a store or somewhere where, you know, there's a, a little child that's, you know, lost their parent and screaming and crying and first thing you do is you know what do you do you you try to make sure the kids safe and then go try to find the parent right same thing here we select the child shift select the parent okay we found the parent and then we're gonna hit control P on the keyboard for parent alright control P and here's the keyboard shortcut and we're going to say object boom we just created a relationship and you'll see up here, now under cube, if you hit this little plus thing, you'll see that cube 1, cube 001, now is underneath cube, cube. So if I go to this cube, and I rotate, now the child follows the parent. And I can do the same thing up here, right? The little sibling. Big brother. Control P. Object. Boom. So now, that guy sits under here. If I rotate this guy, parent, children follow. And just like in the real world, older sister, rotate, younger sister follows older sister. And then little kid runs off on his own. Okay, parent, big sister or big brother, little brother, little sister. Okay, so that creates that hierarchy. All right. Now, if you want to break that hierarchy and you don't want it anymore, okay, you can just select everything, go over here to parent. See, whereas control P is shortcut for parent, clear is alt P. Clear. Clear parent. All right. And now the relationship, sadly, is broken. Okay, the kids have nest, left the nest. They they've moved out, and they're on their own now. That is the very very basics of rigging. Okay, you get one object to control something else. Okay, so take a little bit of time. You know, pause the video, whatever. Go play with that, and that's the very basics. Now it goes further in depth that we're going to cover in the next part of this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scene. Eh, you know what? No. No, I'm not. I'm going to leave this scene as is. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to join them together into one group. Okay? So I'm going to go to Tools and I'm going to hit Join. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Tab and I'm going to subdivide to make these thicker with more geometry. So I'm going to subdivide a few times. One, ah, number of cuts, I'll say three. All right. 
and then I hit tab again to go back into object mode. So now I have these relatively thick objects. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's just going to make my job in explaining this a little bit easier. And what we can do now is instead of using an object to control another, we can use what's called bones, okay, an armature. So if I go over here to create and I say armature, boom. Of course, that created it where my 3D cursor was. So I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say object, snap, cursor to center, and I'm going to put it back down there. Now I'm going to hit armature. Okay? Let that be a lesson to you. If your armature, if your if your 3D cursor is anywhere not at the, not where you want it, you're not going to get the results you want. So just know that it's going to create everything where your 3D cursor is by default, and that's how you solve that. Okay? You go to object, snap, and cursor to wherever, cursor to center in my case. And what this did is it created a bone in here. You can't really see it. You see the top of it. So what we're going to do is we'll pull this out a little bit. I'm going to go over here to this little human little thingy and I'm going to say x-ray under display. Now I can see my bone. It shines through the object and you'll always see it. Okay, so here's my bone. Now I can use the bone to control this object. So if I were to select this object, select a child, then select a parent, sorry, child first, then parent, control P, and I'm just going to say for right now um, with empty groups. Now if I rotate this parent, it rotates the whole thing. So now I'm using the armature, and just like the parent relationship, it threw the bones and then it threw the cubes under the armature. So you're basically just using this as a parent. And you can really use anything as a parent. I mean, you can parent anything to anything in here and it works. But bones let you do really cool things. And I'm going to show you what in a minute. I'm going to go here and I'm going to say clear. Okay, or what you can do is if you select this, you'll see if you go to this little wrench here, set it add modifier, you can just kill this. Okay, you can just hit X and just delete it. All right, and now the nothing nothing exists. You know, well, the, the parent child relationship still exists, so you want to clear that too. All right, so you hit clear, clear, clear parent, clear everything, and now this guy is, oops, this guy is on his own. Okay once again. And again, I moved my cursor, so I'm going to say cursor to, 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 to cursor to center. All right. What I can do with this is I can make more of these. So if I go to edit mode, edit mode, or I hit tab, I can extrude this. So if I hit extrude, while I'm on that little orange part, all right, and I do it again, extrude, pull it up, I now have three bones. Okay, and if I go back to my object mode, I can select my child, I can select my parent, and I can go here and I can say Control P, and Armature Deform adds that modifier in here that we saw before. So Control P, and I'm going to say Automatic Weights. Now, if I rotate, parent-child relationship exists, and another relationship exists. If I go here, I have a new pose, right? I can't select any other bone. You can sit here all day, banging your head against your, your desk, trying to select more bones, and, and you won't be able to, because we have a new mode down here, a new interaction mode called pose. If we go into there, okay, pose, we can now select our other bones. And if we rotate those, you'll see they are now controlling each respective piece on its own. And the cool thing is the bones don't render. All right? They're invisible to the render engine. So you're just going to see these three things, and you can set keyframes on these bones to do whatever you want. So this is rigging. You're now creating a set of bones that allow you to move an object. Pretty cool. Now what if you wanted to do more with this? Well, if I went into edit mode, I can also hit subdivide. And I can subdivide this a few times. And what I can do now, 
is if I go into pose mode, you're going to see a big mess happen. Or maybe not. Rotate. Yep. Okay, only the bone that was originally rotating will rotate it. Okay, these other bones don't do much right now. And the reason for that is there's something called weight painting. So if I hit select this and I control tab, you'll see, I'll go over to my uh, little little kind of triangle over here, okay? This is uh, data, and you see that I have these vertex groups, okay? Bone 1, bone, bone 01, bone 02. These are my vertex groups. These are the, the points that are affected by the bone. So if I go here, and these bones are not, okay, these, these were not created, okay, with this in mind. So I can select a bone, okay, one that's not, see, this bone has this square cube, this bone has this cube, and this bone has this cube. These bones don't have any. If I select this, they turn purple, okay, telling you that, you know, they really don't have much going on. I can select a bone, and once I start, see this little circle here? I start painting, okay? I can show you that I'm going to paint around, just around this area here, okay? And I see bone 04. That, that now ha controls this part. I select this. I can select the middle and kind of paint around, paint around, paint around. All right. That's kind of messy, but uh, I'll just leave it at that for now. Okay, so that's bone 03, and then bone 01 I can take, and I can just paint up here. All right, it's not going to be perfect. I'm just illustrating how this works. Okay, so now if I go back from weight paint, and I go back into, say, object mode, and I select these guys, okay, it just snaps me back into pose mode, that's fine. And now if I rotate, you'll see that it starts rotating different pieces. Okay, each piece rotates. It works on the vertices that I painted, the part of the cube that I painted. So obviously if I had more divisions in here, you would see a better result. But this is how it works. Alright, so I covered a whole lot in this video. And I'll probably go into weight painting a lot more when I start doing, you know, characters and, and um, props and other things. But this is the very basics of how it works. And I still haven't touched anything like constraints and things like that. Um, that I'll probably touch more in, in vehicles or when I do rigging, you know, eye rigging, you can use constraints where you can grab, you know, objects and move those around and control the characters, you know, where a character looks and their eyes. There's all sorts of crazy, crazy stuff that you can do with this. But this is the basics. So watch this video a few times. Take notes. I covered a lot in here, uh, probably a lot more than I even wanted to. But I wanted to give you an overview of basic rigging and how it works. All right, there will be more videos coming on rigging. This is the very basic one. So watch it a few times, take notes, and go in and play. And again, the comment section is open. So if you have comments, I'll, I'll do my best to answer them and, and hopefully make this a lot less painful for you going forward so you can go ahead and start mastering rigging in Blender. So if you got anything out of this video, please hit like, please subscribe, and I will definitely keep making more. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.